Welcome in to iUniversity Prep Cheat Codes, 8th grade social studies edition. This is episode 7. To Constitution or not to Constitution? That is the question. That was the question facing our young nation as the Articles of Confederation was just a disaster, not a, uh, a good form of government. So, um, yeah, the Constitutional Convention, they met and they rewrote, or they wrote an entirely new set of government. But it wasn't like uh, the Constitution was just automatically passed. It had to go to the states for ratification to be to be um, approved by all the states so that it would become officially the government of the United States of America. And some people did not want the Constitution. Others did. And so this is where the fight and the battle begins for the ratification or the approval of the United States Constitution. And so on the left side of your screen, we have James Madison, John Jay, and Alexander Hamilton right there. Alexander Hamilton, Hamilton the musical. Anyway, um, those those folks uh, were called the Federalists. They argued in favor of the United States Constitution. They wrote uh, a series of essays called the Federalist Papers. On the right side, we have George Mason, Patrick Henry, and Samuel Adams. And I know that you probably may have heard of Sam Adams having to do with the American Revolution. You may have heard of Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death kind of guy. George Mason, you probably haven't heard of. And he's the most likely one to have a, have a question asked about him on the anti-federalist side of things. They also wrote essays they argued against the United States Constitution they feared that it did not protect the freedoms of individuals and freedoms of the states. So there you have it, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. Federalists were for the Constitution, Anti-Federalists were against the Constitution. So let's take a look at what you need to write on your note cards. Uh, note card one, the Federalists, Alexander Hamilton, John, James Madison, John Jay supports the Constitution, said Bill of Rights was not necessarily, and they wrote the Federalist Papers. Uh, note card number two, side one is the anti-federalist Patrick Henry George Mason. You can put Sam Adams down if you'd like. Opposed the Constitution. They wanted a Bill of Rights because they feared a lack of a guarantee of freedoms. So they wanted that Bill of Rights to be included in the Constitution. Um, the Federalists were against the Bill of Rights. They said, we don't need that. It's just going to make things uh, a, a lot worse. So anyway, the they thought, uh, the, the anti-federalists, once again, the second note card, thought the Constitution gave too much power to the federal government, and they wrote the anti-federalist papers. Let's go to the sample questions. All right, Patrick Henry, always, already, once again, pause these, that way you can answer for yourself, but anyway, Patrick Henry, anti-federalist, opposed ratifying the U.S. Constitution because why? He believed what? Was it that the states would surrender too much power to the federal government? G alliances could not be formed with other countries. It had nothing to do with other countries. The courts would not be able to hold government officials accountable. It had nothing to do with the courts. <clears throat> Individuals would exercise too much power over the federal government. He feared exactly the opposite. The federal government would exercise too much power over individuals. Absolutely, this one is F. Absolutely. Remember next. Once again, work through it. Pause. During the Constitutional Convention of 1787, George Mason, there's that guy again, argued. So he's going to be against the Constitution. So which one of these, you know, kind of talks about being against the Constitution? He argued against increased power for the national government. For the dissolution of state governments. Absolutely not. He wanted the state governments. He wanted the state governments to have lots and lots of power. Against the passage of a Bill of Rights? No, he wanted the Bill of Rights. Absolutely false. For the creation of a strong executive branch, once again, the only one here that makes sense is F. He argued against the increased power of the national government. Number next, there's that guy again, George Mason. He refused to sign the Constitution and opposed its ratification because he believed that it did not adequately protect individuals from potential government abuse. Did not give the executive branch branch enough power to over. Nope, definitely not. Prevented the legislative branch from effectively governing the states. Definitely not. Thought it gave the legislative branch a lot of power in governing. Prevented the judicial branch from. Absolutely not. The only one here that makes sense is did not adequately protect individuals. Individual rights. 
need to be thinking about individual rights. <clears throat> Why did the anti-federalists demand that a Bill of Rights be added to the U.S. Constitution to strengthen the authority of the federal government? They did not want to strengthen the authority of the federal government. They wanted to limit the power of the federal government. To improve the organization of the judiciary? Absolutely not. To give each state an equal amount of power? It wasn't about that. To protect individual freedoms from the federal government? Are you sensing a trend about the anti-federalists and individual freedoms? There you go. All right, here's Patrick Henry, another anti-federalist. Your president may easily become king. Your Senate is so imperfectly constructed that your dearest rights might be sacrificed by what may be a small minority. Your strongholds will be in the hands of your enemies. What is he talking about? He was criticizing which aspect of the Constitution in this excerpt? The ability to, the eligibility requirements for congressional office? Definitely not. The power granted to the central government, possibly. The establishment of a separate judicial branch, nope. The difficulty of the amendment process, no. The only one that makes any sense is that the central government, the federal government, the national government was too powerful according to these anti-federalists. Number 16. With which of the following arguments would the authors of the Federalist Papers most likely have agreed? So we're switching from the anti-federalists to the federalists. All right. Federalists. Bill of Rights should be included in the Constitution. They did not want a Bill of Rights. Having a stronger central government would make the country more stable and prosperous. The three-fifths compromise result, they did not argue that at all. Universal suffrage, that did, they did not argue that either. The Federalists were about a stronger central government that will make the country more stable and prosperous. Absolutely. All right, the plan of the government now proposed is evidently calculated totally and changed. This is Federal Frank Farmer, number one, 1787. In time, our condition as a people. Instead of being 13 republics under a federal head, it is clearly designed to make us one consolidated government. Those in favor of ratifying the Constitution most likely respond to this concern by pointing out that elected representatives are accountable to individual voters. Courts have the right to resolve disputes between states. Each branch of government can serve as a check on the other branches. Power is divided between the federal and state governments. This is a tricky, tricky question. So let's take a look back at our thing. The plan of government now proposed is evidently calculated totally to change in time our condition as a people. Instead of being 13 republics under a federal head, it is clearly designed to make us one federal, one consolidated government. <clears throat> Those in favor of ratifying the Constitution might likely respond to this concern by saying that what? So what's the concern? That the 13 individual states will lose power, will not have power. So the only answer that really talks about that is the power divided between the federal and the state governments. That shared power. Absolutely. 39. In the debate over the ratification of the U.S. Constitution, which point would have been made by a Federalist? The existing national government lacks the ability to add new states to the Union. The states are in danger of losing their ability to raise revenue. The existing national government lacks the power to perform essential functions, or the states are unable to protect the rights of the people. The problem with the previous form of government, the Articles of Confederation, is the national government lacked the power to perform essential functions. So that's exactly what that one is. Federalist number 51. In the Republic of America, the power surrendered by the people is first divided between two distinct governments, and then the portion allotted to each subdivided among distinct and separate departments. Hence, a double security arises to the rights of the people. The different governments will control each other at the same time that each will be controlled by itself. What assurance did this argument give to those opposed to ratifying the Constitution? The amendment process, it was not about the amendment process. Making the federal government superior state governments would ensure greater stability. The rights of citizens would be better protected by having both. That's what it's talking about right there. The rights of citizens is going to be upheld and protected by having both state and federal governments that can respond. Absolutely. Bill of Rights are not only unnecessary in the proposed Constitution, would be even dangerous. That is a Federalist idea. The Federalists did not want a Bill of Rights, but it ended up writing a Bill of Rights anyway just to get the Constitution to pass. So that was kind of the bargain that was made. The Federalists wrote a Bill of Rights so that the Anti-Federalists would support the Constitution. 
All right, speaker one, a strong central government will provide order and stability. So that would be a Federalist idea. We have just left the control of a tyrant. Let us avoid an American tyrant. Well, that would be an anti-Federalist idea. The strength of our union lies in the independence of our states. That is an anti-Federalist idea. We were led into war by a minority who desired independence. Anti-Federalist idea. So the only one of these that's in favor of the Constitution, the only one that's a Federalist, is Speaker 1. Speaker 1. All right, so we've talked about Federalist and Anti-Federalist, but we are talking about Hamilton too here. So there's a couple of questions here about Hamilton. So according to Alexander Hamilton, which action was necessary to ensure the stability of the nation's economy? Um, when you think of Alexander Hamilton, think about the old $10 bill and everything to do with banking and money. Hamilton, after being a Federalist, the big thing you need to know about him is the um, anything about banking money, establishing the National Bank. Alexander Hamilton's plan to improve the U.S. economy. The federal government assumes state debts. The federal government would what? What action completes this diagram? Establish a national bank. Remember that Alexander Hamilton, after writing the Federalist Papers, became um, Secretary of the Treasury under um, President George Washington. So there you go. All right, the must know Federalists won the Constitution, anti Federalists opposed it, and that's pretty much the big thing you have to know. Welcome, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great, great, great rest of your day. And thanks, I'm out.